uh, my old apartment building. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> No it's way. Important. Is used in so many pornos. Oh. I found this out after I moved out and it really kind of haunted me because the reason being, we're, this will probably be in the video. The so couch was always At, at, at home, something. no, at home, you say whatever you want. I had, uh, my apartment came furnished oh. from the building. Oh God. So you have to ask some questions. Was it used? You never turned a black light on, thank goodness. If you I was scared to. questions, man. Like, I mean, notably, I was, I, I'm not saying I was watching anything, but one day I was watching. You're like, that looks just like my couch. No, I recognized the view and I was, I was like, nice, nice view. I was like, that's the XYZ building. And I was like, son of a bitch, that's my own building. <laughs> and I'm just like, you know, it was a good, I mean, it was a good video, but I mean, still like. You went from turned on to like, down. Oh, I'm out, I'm <laughs> out, man. You just gotta wonder. That's, that's awesome. funny. Man. But anyway, today's video, is on something hopefully you never have to use on a porn shoot, which is why you would want to carry a gun and a knife on the opposite side of your body. If you're using that in a porn, that's dark web shit. You do that in your own time. This is not that kind of show. This is for families Kids, and family, family <laughs> oriented <laughs> entertainment. So anyway. Yeah, so Proceed. today I want to talk about, um, it's, it's more of theory, concept based, depending who you talk to, but a lot of people carry their knife on the same side of their firearm. So in this case, I just have a waistband. So obviously this would be a right hand draw. So we're gonna make the knife right here also a right hand draw. But if I have the gun more on the hip, maybe this might be where the gun is more mm -hmm. like appendix style, okay? The way I train and the way I carry is I carry a knife on the opposite side of my gun. Reason being is if the person comes in and tries to trap my gun or try to take my gun, okay? Well, now I'm assuming, let's say you have a hands-on, yep. Here, I obviously don't want him just pulling the gun out. So I'm gonna have to be in this scenario where I'm trying to keep pressure down on the firearm, whether it be the hands, the wrists, or I'm trying to pull the elbows inward, okay? From this position, if I try to reach and pull the knife out, well, now I actually just took my lead support hand, the same side as the draw, off his body, or off, off his control, right? Okay. So now I have to come out and try to deploy this. Can While I, I do draw. that, he already grabbed. Now, let's say I have this hand and I'm controlling on this one. Well, shitty leverage, isn't it? Correct. Just watch, I'm, I'm really gonna try to do this. You're good. Okay. Yeah. Pull it up. Yeah, and there's no way. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Second thing, let's assume, I'm just gonna switch this because a lot of people don't carry waistband. Let's say I carry in that position. It's so uncomfortable that for the next few hours we have to just like stare at your pack. Right, just, you know. Oh, and you were really zoom in on that? tight shorts today. <laughs> <laughs> really tight shorts, knowing that all day we're going to be <laughs> just like, dude, be a professional, man. Like, okay. like, he, go, he goes to grab my gun, right? So we're in here. Well, now what's going to happen? Go ahead, go, go both hands. Both up. hands, okay. So either I'm going to have to left hand try to draw this, and the second he sees that, he's most likely going to go right hand on my left hand. Go, yep, just like that. Mm -hmm. So now. We're in this situation okay. where now I can't get my gun or my knife. Or second, can I try and draw from that? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, he's gonna be able to. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, go again on two on one on the gun. I go to come through here, or let's say somehow this happened. Now I'm trying to pull this out of a sheath while it's bent and it's pushing into me. Well, now I'm gonna have this issue, which now he can trap and pin and draw the firearm. Okay. Or go back. He is fixated actually on the knife. So let's say we're here and I'm trying to pull this out and now just pull the knife out. And now puncture in me, right? It doesn't take much, mm -hmm. right? Any weapon you carry can be used against you. That's sure. just, it's simple math, right? Well that and like go back to that. Yeah, so sure. I draw it. When I was training John Wick, you know, we'd come up like that and then hit the elbow. Yeah, that actually, that actually works. That's legit. I, yeah, you I can know. hit on that for him. Yeah. I know, I know, I, did, I forgot you did all the choreography. Yeah, yeah my bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, we, we don't talk a lot about it on camera, but and maybe, maybe we're working on John Wick 17 right now. Right? So, that is the cons of carrying it on the same side. We go opposite side. Okay, let's just say I'm just carrying it, that's fine. Okay, he goes to grab my gun. I know in this case, this right here is gonna be the strong arm controlling the gun. Reason being, lead side and this is gonna be a right hand draw. So the way he's gonna pull it up is when he draws, he already has hand on. So. Well, literally, all I have to do for that at almost full extension is drop my elbow. Yep. The other thing, too, a lot of people think about is they think that the person has to get the gun completely out of the holster. The only thing that needs to be exposed trigger guard. is that trigger guard. Yeah. A lot of people don't think about that. So even if you move the gun 
right there. If you could get that finger on the trigger, we'll get torch off around. Dude. Rounds are already going into either my calf, my foot, my leg, or if you start bending this in, it's and going into my hip. I was gonna say, in major, you know, yeah. arterials. Yeah, absolutely. We have the, the whole pelvic, pelvic region, is, and then we have the yeah. uh, femoral in the air. Yeah. So we're here. He goes on, and maybe I'm hugging this to my body. Maybe I'm pulling in the elbow to create some bend in that wrist to make him uncomfortable. This is where seconds are going to matter. Whatever scenario and grip I choose, it's going to be off reaction, however you train, because you're not going to have time to think about this. Mm -hmm. So let's assume I'm just going to go here at the meat of the wrist, and I'm going to try to bend. See how I have that right there? And see how I'm pulling my elbow down? See how now you're having trouble pulling that out? Yep. Okay, that was like maybe a second and a half before yep. you start getting that trigger guard out. That's not much. I couldn't even get the trigger guard out. In that time period, so go ahead, you can go two on one if you want. Yeah, here. I'm, there's nothing jammed up over here. I'm keeping this in by the time I draw. I'm now yeah, and I here. can't. I can't even. Yep. Well, the great thing too with that is you're not even holding my arm. You're mm -hmm. literally using your body weight yeah. and leverage. That's a, yeah, I'm not going to arm wrestle he's not you. I know you're down. stronger. I'm not going to arm wrestle you. And yeah. especially you're a two on one. So I'm already at a disadvantage, not even including the size difference. Yeah. Right? Um, the other thing I have going on my side though is there is going to be retention on the holster. Obviously, this holster isn't specifically meant for this firearm yeah and assuming maybe we have um you guys have seen like the level two retentions when yeah. we have to like buttons and a lot of law enforcement and stuff yeah. Yeah. correct yeah exactly um so that could also benefit me if i have that i personally don't really like all those holsters but if that is what you decide to carry that could benefit you in a situation like this um, but we come back and let's say even if i'm in here and you see me starting to uh deploy a blade even from here, what we're going to eventually talk about in, the, in, in a little bit is I can't get this out, but what I can do is jerk my hips back and now start working that. Even if that's just a yeah, slash, again. yep, here, or he has the knife, so we know push pull, right? We'll go path least resistance. Yeah. We're going to come here and start attacking on the hand that is trying to control that. So the second we cut, hopefully he lets go. That could be my time to start coming in and start deploying the firearm. Um, one of the things that you just push your hips back there. I'm just pushing my hips back. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit. It's, like a, it's like a basic sprawl kind of. Kind of. I was like more of a twerk, right? Same, uh, same. Yeah, yeah. Same uh, idea. Just, just pushing my hips out because a cool. lot of people think everything is all, you know, muscling and using that and it's not. You use, you use your entire simple. body. Yeah, yeah that's mm. simple. Just very simple. Um, so let's say. Yeah, because I got a question on this. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well. I, as probably a lot of people do, carry appendix. Okay, so you so, carry knife appendix or gun? Gun Both. appendix and I'm a lefty. Okay. Well, no, I don't carry knife appendix. Oh, no? Okay. Um, no, so like... We'll try to recreate this, but right-handed. Yeah, sure, right? So I would basically, if I were uh, a righty, I would be running appendix right, right hand. Got it. Uh-huh. And I'd run my fixed blade, in that case, on my left side. Left side? Yes. Oh, so you're so you are opposite. So that would be, my question is, is what I just described considered opposite? Yeah, that, that's correct. Because the appendix thing's like, okay, I don't know if this is Oh yeah, okay, we didn't, no, but the, does that To mean me it's opposite the, hand is what I'm. But it is know. opposite side of the body because if you notice, this is more on the right side of my body and if I have the knife over here. Got it. Okay. Left, so it's hem you break the body into hemispheres. Yeah. Okay. Well, and, and, and see, I, I've, you know, pure bro science thinking about it, but I'm just going, look, I like the thought of, hey, I can draw my gun, shoot one-handed if need be. I still have this option to get a blade out mm -hmm. for whatever this is. I just like that, hey, I can do two different things with different options. Yeah. So let's pretend I draw my gun, and for whatever weird situation we may be in, and I need to deploy that knife, like you just said, you might have a gun in your left hand because you're left-handed, and you might mm -hmm. have your knife in your right hand. Let's say you just draw it, and I close the distance and trap against your body. I'm fucked. This is not good. Yeah, yeah look at I this. Can get this. Dude, this is no. This is yeah. bad. And if... Let's rewind that. Doesn't matter if this is vertical or horizontal, by the way. So yeah. if you go, if I'm here... You go to draw. Right? First off, I'm not going to be square here, and I don't want this as my lead leg, even though I have the gun further away from him, which could be correct. If this guy has any type of skill level or training, this foot is now exposed to, uh, in judo, we call like Ouchi Gari. It's just going to be an inside trip. Mm -hmm. And because my weight is leaning backwards, so yeah, I can just. Yep, if you, yep, go ahead and do that. If just, you come in, now we're ending up in this position right here. And assuming he lands on top of me with his body weight on this firearm, it'll and, kill him. And this is concrete, and where we live, Arizona, 
120 degree temperature, ground might be 160. Yeah, we don't want to be on the ground. Okay. okay. But we come back and now I have this forward. And now the question is, well, can he start grabbing the leg or maybe outside hooking on this? Well, first off, I'm going to be very, very heavy right here. So by my base, if you notice, I'm not super postured up, I'm bending. So I'm actually decreasing my mobility due to the fact that I'm in a lower center of gravity, but I'm increasing my stability. So the second we're in a postured position, our stability is not good, but we have very good mobility. However, if we're in a position like this, like a, like a grappling stance almost, or we're gonna be in some sort of clinch scenario, I don't wanna be postured up because the second push, we call that Kazushi, I'm off balance. Mm -hmm. You're gonna be able to tip me backwards or sideways or however. But if I'm like this, and I'm pretty good, I have my hips forward, I'm not hips back, hips forward, but I have a slight bend, try to push. Right, go, go ahead. See how much that takes? Yeah. Compared to, go again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's the but, same thing as a shooting stance, right? Mm -hmm. Good so base. Back to all your, transfers over. Back to your question. We come here and you grab. I have my lead leg forward. I'm heavy here. I come here. Like I said, now we can start attacking. Even if this gun slightly comes out and he's jamming me up going, and this comes out and he pushes it across. Remember how we were doing? Yeah. So we're here and I can't get this gun in the play, but I got this knife out, right? So from here, I'm most likely, I'm not going to try to reach and stab. Close, right? Exactly. I need yeah. to attack the thing that's got control of my main primary, primary weapon. weapon. Correct. So as I draw, I'm either going to start slashing or I'm going to take the blade, cut, and hook open. Now, I might be able to muzzle strike or we go back as we're here and I open. Now, we're working into there, pulling out, and then re -dread. Yeah. Because so, I've, I've always that, been... Yeah. Answer your question. Yeah. Yeah, on that token too, we previous job, um, SWAT cop, you know, law enforcement for a bunch of years, carried a karambit right behind his gun. Mm -hmm. Because his idea was, and they trained this way, mm -hmm. if someone grabbed the gun, he could still trap their hands with that, grab the karambit and just go over their hands and then create distance. Correct, but when we talked about that, let's pretend this is a karambit. And, okay, so you were saying, was he going like this and he was trapping? Yeah, like if a guy's trapping. And he's coming here? Mm -hmm. Here's the problem, get closer to me because you're not gonna have that space. You have yeah. me so tight now yeah. that I need space in order to deploy that. Now the question could be, what if I step back? Yeah. Well, follow. Then I'd just keep. It does not down. take a trained fighter to just walk you close down. Close that distance. Now, what if this? The conversation we were having last night. Yeah. Everyone assumes that a fight is going to be in an open area like this, maybe in a parking lot. Go up against whatever. The wall. What about a car, a wall, a pillar, a restaurant? You're up against a bar, a table, a chair. Maybe you're at a sporting event, whatever situation People you may find yourself you. in, yeah. even moving backwards. Okay, we're in a parking lot, parking curb, right? I don't know what's behind me and I'm not fixated. I'm not gonna have you try to take my gun and I'm looking behind me, oh, what's behind me? No, no way, dude, this is fight or flight. So in a situation where we may find ourselves in, is we're up against a wall and same thing. I'll have this on this side. Someone tries to grab the gun, yep. So I'm gonna go after the side that's carrying here. Mm. Maybe I try to move back, he pins me up against this, yep. right? And let's say I can't jerk my hips backwards. What I can do now is I jerk my hips to the side to get that knife out and now I churn mm -hmm. and I can start working here, 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 or here. Does that or make sense? Face. Yeah, or the face. Don't I try not to go, <laughs> I don't aim blade to face. Uh, reason being is that's gonna be a small target. So just like shooting yeah. center mass. Yeah, for but sure. But primarily I'm going for the wrists and the wrists, yes, are small targets but his wrists are fixated on a firearm. So I know he's not gonna move that. And this head. isn't, this isn't slow-mo, it's not. And he's like, oh wow, I have plenty of time to move my hand. No, this is gonna be yeah. immediate down while he's trying to drive all of his weight and maybe I'm trapped up against a barrier or object. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Hmm. Cool. Did you have any questions off of No, it? that was it, like that karambit thing. You know, I, I always thought, man, that's so smart, but not knowing. Was his karambit fixed or was it a... a yeah, it was a fixed karambit. karambit. Okay, cool, mm -hmm. good, good. So I was gonna say, if, it, if, if again, if we had the pocket knife and we see how the firearm gets strapped and now I had to shove my hand into my pocket Jesus. to get a pocket knife out and then deploy it, spring assisted or not, while he has a hand on my firearm, I now have to take my hand into my pocket, yeah. which is now trapping me even worse, and one hand that is now not defending, so it's the 1v2 plus body weight that I have to pull out. Plus your primary hand that would draw that weapon. Correct, and that's assuming mm. that I carried the knife on the same side as the firearm, where if it was opposite, it may work, 
But again, time. it's going to increase time because in a fight like this, it comes down to seconds and milliseconds, just like a gunfight. Yeah. This is a gunfight without the gun being deployed yet. So that's my theory mm. on carrying a edged weapon is the edge weapon is not, this is lethal, whether you like it or not. This is not a non-lethal use of force. This is gonna be a lethal use of force, right? Well, if I have a gun and a knife on me, I'm gonna pull the gun because if I'm gonna get charged, you're gonna get charged the same way if it's a firearm or a knife, yeah, okay? Unless, will. obviously, my rounds are hitting civilians where a knife, I would probably have to like throw it. But I carry the knife as retention because in case someone tries to grab my gun or yeah. jams me up, right? So this is my secondary use. I'm not gonna pull the knife, I'm gonna pull the gun. You go to trap the gun, I have my knife to get specifically to, to get you off my gun in order to deploy. You know, that's it, interesting. It, it, you know, it, it's crazy too, and we don't need to go all the way down this rabbit hole, but I, you know, I've had conversations with, with dudes where the, the topic has come up of, if you had gun and knife on you, and in certain encounters, based on circumstances, the gun is not the tool. Because fucking bystanders, pavement, houses, surrounding shit, where you're just like, dude, I cannot be sending lead flying into planet Earth right now. Like, there's times when that's a reality. No, that is absolutely true, and I do agree on that. That's why I said you gotta, you gotta know your backdrop and you gotta watch out for hitting. Every bullet you fire, we talked about this last time, has a lawyer attached to it, Correct. right? So we need to be uh, you know, very careful with that. But in that fight or flight situation, right? Especially for someone who's never been in a gunfight or even been in a fight, period, and they carry a gun, they carry a knife, calling her right now the gun is going to be the deployment option and sure assuming that we're in some sort of situation like that it's going to be close encounters remember last time we talked about if we're super far away one i could just leave whether it be in a vehicle by foot if the guy keeps following you you know we're using verbal commands right so we're, we're using escalation different here. exact exactly we're using escalation tactics de-escalation tactics um you know we it's most likely going to go hands-on first we're not going to be here talking and i just draw i'm not going to draw this is most likely going to be some sort of fighting situation. And again, if he is throwing punches, I'm not going to cover and come down here. My goal might be something Close the distance. here, right? Mm -hmm. It's not going to be, right? We're not police officers. I'm not going to be out here like this, yeah. right? So, and I'm also not going to be out here like, okay, come at me. Yeah. You know, it's not, I'm not going to Especially that. that distance, because I'm going to draw. Assuming you, you, you have a knife, weapon I'm, too. Yeah. Or if not, you leave, or there's bystanders, I now just brandished a weapon. Yeah. It doesn't have to be a firearm. It's still brandishing a weapon, and that could be attempted assault with the deadly weapon due to a threatening reasoning. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you have to look at legalities. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, a lot of people who carry firearms, they either don't train hand, hands-on techniques, they don't train blade options or flashlights. Flashlights can work the same exactly as a knife, and they don't study or recognize the uh, you know legal legal stuff. Yeah. So yeah. You, you need to be well rounded because if you're going to carry like we were talking the other day, if you carry a firearm, you need to be responsible. Yeah. This is a tool that can hurt yourself or hurt others. It's just a tool, right? Yeah. But you got to know the consequences of using it. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people they're like, oh well, self defense, I should be fine. You're going to jail, dude. Doesn't yeah. matter, self defense yeah. shooting or not. You're gonna go to jail. Or Eventually, you're very gonna be, least you're winding up in court. You're in not just uh, you're gonna end up in the civil court too, where that family, even though that guy mugged you, tried him. to kidnap your yep. child, you shot them, right? Guess what? You're still getting civil sued. Yeah. Yep. 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 When I was doing my um, uh, use of deadly force certification for the state of Arizona, um, I found out that even in a self-defense shooting, the average court fees are five hundred to six hundred thousand yep. dollars. Yep. Yeah, so I one of when I first started getting into training, the guy said, if you're not willing to lose, you might walk away with your life, but you're going to lose your house, your job, bankruptcy. Yep. Probably going to ruin your marriage. It's like, if you're not willing to lose all that, but still be alive or in a loved one is alive, then do not carry a gun. I, and I 100% and I, agree. I mean, this is a class like 400 people. Mm -hmm. Like me and 20 other people were like, you know what's funny? I'm, I'm willing to lose that. There's so many people listen to that, and it goes in one ear and right out the other, and they're, like we talked about last time, they're just cowboys. They want to carry that yep. gun. They want they to be the hero. The they want to be the John Wick. And these are the guys who end up in shootings that should have never even been a shooting. Correct. It could have been, we're talking crap. We end up in a fight. I draw a gun and shoot. Where this could have been, you know what? I'm, I'm leaving. You know, like we talked about last time, walking away sometimes, yeah. most of the time, is going to be your best option. Yeah. A lot of people think, you know, shooting and target, they're going to be John Wick and go save everybody. A fight is a mutual agreement. 
Dude, unless you come up and attack me, that's violence. Because yeah. that is me, I'm not agreeing to fighting you. But if we're both here, we're both talking crap, and we end up in some sort of situation or conflict, that was a mutual agreement between both of us. Yeah. But if I'm, if I'm walking away, I have now mm. tried to add some sort of deterrent, mm -hmm. and I'm trying to de-escalate, and I'm yeah. trying to go home, go on with my business. But if you come up and assault me, well, now we consider that a violent situation. That is no longer a mutual fight. That is something where I may have to um, deploy some sort of lethal option. And that is something that obviously will be brought up in the court is, did you have the option to escape? Why did you go in there? I like, tried. Hey, I yeah. tried yeah. multiple times, mm -hmm. verbally and physically, by getting away from the subject that was causing the issue. Mm -hmm. But sometimes it doesn't work like that, right? Yes. We're putting our groceries in our car or you know, we're walking through a dark alley and you know, whatever. Also, the biggest thing, ego, dude. It's ego. Those same yeah. guys, oh, no, I didn't cut you off. Fuck you, dude. No, fuck you. Yeah. You're like, hey, Cut you off, man. Hey, my bad, dude. I and it's will, as simple as no, that. I'm good. Is, dude, my ego is, this, you're not going to hurt my feelings. It, it, that's the thing. Yeah. Are you willing to, again, yeah. risk your bankruptcy, your house, everything, dude. your family, yeah. right? Everything you own, your life savings, your job, just because of X, Y, and Z. When it could have been as simple when you're in your jail cell and you're thinking, I should have just walked I away. I should have just took the L, dude. should have just yeah. walked away. Yeah. You know, it was going to hurt your pride, your ego. It doesn't matter because you still have more than that person. And that person is just having a worse time than you are.